Isabel wakes up on a mattress stuffed inside a dumpster, and above her is a giant hole. I wonder how she got here. Anyway, she's in a little fenced in alley, and she manages to find a hole in the back of it where she claws out of it. Emergency in any way. She walks into the main slate where the cutscene begins, and I, I'm just going to explain what happens really quickly in a nutshell. Oh no, a kid! She runs into an abandoned house, falls down a pit, wakes up in a cell, gets out of the cell, leaves a weird story, and sees someone trying towards a guy with long hair. Nice. Getting out of the basement, she comes out this Lando's house, finding the key and opening the back door. The town person is like, Oh no, guys, it's a kid. And calls the others to come help. She runs down the main street towards a large farm door. Getting in, she slowly pulls it shut, and as she does so, gets to witness an angel guy start murdering people. Almost out, she now needs to go get some fuses to open the door, because every horror game has you get fuses for some reason. And once collecting these, she almost falls to her death when the glad beneath her decides to take a break and the angel guy grabs her. He's like, wait, you're, you're not like me? And then, and then he leaves. Anyway, Isabel runs off towards burning in the distance. Chup to do, defective perfection, woo woo. Isabel finds herself near a giant building called the hospital. She runs towards it and the front door is closed, which always sucks. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw a meme. Of of Papyrus Mundertale, I <laughs> yeah she she gets anyway she enters through a tiny vent on the side. Anyway, she eventually finds herself in the toilet and she gets slammed against the wall as a patient bursts out of a stall and takes a feel at Isabel's stomach, feeling for ovaries tip a bit lower. Anyway, Isabel pushes the glabby patient away as they start yelling about the new boy. I don't know if it seems plot relevant. Isabel walks around the reception and gets herself a level 1 keycard. She hears an announcement on the intercom from an entity which first to help as the doctor saying, there will be a show on shortly. Isabel is a big fan of Bluey, Family Guy, and other shows on Disney+, Plus. so now she wants to get in. But to get in, she'll need to get through the stuff, which needs a combination. After a game with some patients, playing three different mini-games, she gets a combination and unlocks the stuff door, where she witnesses the doctor looks like some messed up Vitruvian man clawing all over a guy pinned at the table. Jeez, there's a lot of pinning people's things in this chapter. Anyway, the doctor carves the patient open and pulls out a little baby from their stomach. Ah, it's a boy. Anyway, Isabel grabs the level do key card from the table and lifts, uh, takes the lift up to the second floor. Making her way up, she sneaks around and eventually heads to the insane ward. She operates the card out of someone's stomach and and she just goes to the auditorium and the doctor's like, Whoa, a little girl. You want a surgery? Wink, wink. And then the toast begins. Eventually, his body runs out of power, so he stops moving while his organic parents keep doing like. And from yeah, there he's just sort of incapacitated. So it's about to sort of pieces out. Chapter three, still life. Okay, Isabel takes a hike, and eventually she gets to a giant manor, which belongs to this guy called the Artist, and as she approaches the Artist manor, the front door is open for her by themselves. She's a bit flaked out, because the owner of this house seems to have a minor fascination with dolls. Only a minor fascination. Anyway, the house's owners... The house owners? <laughs> anyway, the house is own... Anyway, the owner of the house calls her... <laughs> I messed that up so many times. Houses. Anyway, the house's owner calls from the gallery for Isabel to come through. I said it like, yes, hell yeah. But wants her not to touch the dolls. Not like she needs a reason to, I mean, she's all really relatively disturbed by the copious amounts of dolls on the floor, as well as the beautiful portraits and melting spoons. Heading to the gallery, Isabel meets the artist who is spinning the air suspended by strings, and he's going on and on about it, but this it? I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just called it art. It's art. Oh my god. Uh, the art is making a... <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm hugging my... Blahaj. This is killing me. Uh, anyway, the artist is making a collection of five art pieces. And luckily for you, he's already made the art. He just needs them... He just needs them to be put together. And to quote him, <clears throat> We all start as a baby, a life. But then we glow, don't we? 
We're going to parasitic children and blind-sided teenagers. Constricted adults before we all become ashes. Everything dies, Isabel. Everything but art. You will help me make my collection. I already have the pieces here. With Isabel's fetch quest sense now triggering, Isabel is tasked with finding a new life, a potted plant. She heads towards the greenhouse, which I'm learning as lighting this script is technically wrong word, it's technically a conservatory, but she goes in by susly venting. She takes the plant pot and then brings back to the artist who's like, Woo! Go get me a kid. What? Isabel heads up a set of stairs in the atrium towards a dark room filled with statues. We've been going to say what? Wait, what? They they don't move? That's weird. Full horror game. Oh well, she enters the room with the lights switch off, and only one statue remaining is wait. Only one statue remains? Can someone pick up that phone? Because I just called it. Oh Anyway, it's a statue of a child with a mouth where its stomach should be, and Isabel is tasked with solving quick puzzles to retrieve food items. Upon feeding the child three times, it shrinks to a tinier statue, and Isabel takes it with her to the artist. If Isabel fails to give the statue food items, she's met with an ungodly scream, which causes her vision to blur before blood bursts from her ears, and then shortly her eyes... Yuck. Anyway, she takes a statue to the artist where he proceeds to not apologize because he's an artist and making art is just what he does. And the next bit is really simple. Isabel is tasked with bringing your head from the other side of the room. Except when presented to the artist, he throws a little fit like, Ah, it's looking at me yucky. Okay, listen here, Slingy Boy. You can't have your cake and complain about it too. Except this time. This time, you can. Isabel is told to head to the kitchen where she alleviates the seemingly living head of its sight, which Isabel is not happy about. Anyway, with item 4 being up next, what twisted things will it be? Get me a painting. Okay. Anyway, the artist needs one final item to represent death. However, he doesn't have it with him, so Isabel needs to travel down to the basement. Riding the dumb waiter in the kitchen, because the only other method of getting down is clogged up by multiple artist plushies. Taking the dumb waiter instead, the power eventually cuts because Isabel weighs slightly more than a plate of food. Speaking of which, why is there a dumb waiter from the kitchen to the basement that barely makes any sense? And why does being heavy cut the power? Excuse me, so you, you might be entitled to eat your cake if the builders can't explain this one. Luckily for Isabel, she's not alone. There's more dolls in the basement, and they're more human-sized than the other one. Isabel has tasked with finding some ash as well to complete the collection and is told to send them up by the dumb waiter which is out of power. So Isabel also needs to find multiple fuses to store the power to the dumbwaiter, all the while the artist helps Isabel over the radio. Turn light. Turn lights. No, no, not that light. My light, not your light. Wait, are you facing east or south? Eventually, Isabel finds the fuses and sends up the ashes. The artist thanks her, then apologizes for spooking her, and Isabel responds with such nice words. The artist opens the door for Isabel to leave as she heads to the next section. Chapter 4, The Fallen. Isabel enters the archives and meets Nana. She's an old lady who has already lied ahead of my EPQ and knows exactly where Isabel is going. That's why Nana's made an escape room for Isabel. <laughs> Isabel has to now go searching in some past memories. Documented memory 1, Candy. She was abusive to her. She hurts her with injuries that cannot be healed. It's true, sticks and stones won't break your bones, but words are just one of the tools able to form one of the deepest cuts. She was not careful with the blade and did not aim to leave just scratches, as she had her heart already. When you open yourself up, you're able to feel all those warm feelings in the tip of the blade that pierces them too. Isabel plays as Michaela in... The pixel art mini game, not to be confused with Michaela, who keeps looping the huntless in the corner of the map. I'm kidding, Michaela's don't do that. Michaela's just boon totems, and that's it. Sorry, that's a bad stereotype. Uh, who is a land of schoolgirl and isn't really that popular. Running around playground, Michaela picks up various gossip topics, which increase her coolness levels. And upon reaching a high enough level, here's a moment about Isabel and Candy's abusive relationship. Okay, pause. 
There's a lot we don't know about Isabel, but Isabel is the L in LGBT and has a girlfriend called Candy, who is very abusive towards her and is hot goss in the school. Clearly not a very nice relationship, but we'll pick up on Isabel's story a bit later. But for now, let's move on to the next documented memory. Documented memory to masking. He was a strange child, one who was different from the others. His parents did not appreciate his special talents, however, it seems they only appreciated what was normal about him. They beat him into submission to try to clear the defective components from his system. I don't think they managed to do this, but I think he somehow gave them the impression that it worked. We play as this Orlando kid called Maxwell, who wears this weird mask all the time. Such a weird kid. Anyway, during this pixel art minigame, Maxwell must walk home, and throughout this, he has to keep his composure when reacting to events such as dogs barking or buses driving by. Once he gets home, he goes to his room and takes off his mask. He sighs before he hears a knocking at the door and puts the mask back on. Okay, so who the heck is this? Well, I'm so nice and I never lie, which is why I never said these were Isabel's or past memories. This is a kid called Maxwell, and I'm thinking the next memory might help you put the pieces together, so let's just... His parents weren't the kindest they could have been to him. I think that's the worst part of all of this. The fact that his parents should have been a light, his parents should have been a safe space in which everything positive should have been held so that he could bathe in the glow of love. It's, it's just so sad they dealt so much damage that the simple idea of a threat was enough to send him running so fast that he fell into this hostile world and found safety within its walls. We come back to Maxwell wearing a mask again. We're tasked with collecting sticks to make something cool. Once we collect enough sticks, Maxwell realizes he actually has nothing to tie them together with, and so he removes his mask and uses a string to make some little stick people. Satisfied with his creations, he heads home, entering through the back garden before he sees his dad with a knife, and so he runs through a hole in the garden fence before an image of a hole flashes on the screen. Anyway, anyone who said the angel guy from chapter 1 is Maxwell gets 25 points instantly. I mean, the man just doesn't appeal after chapter 1. It's probably one of the most important characters. So if you guessed that, well done. Anyway, yeah, Maxwell is the harmony, and prior to getting a hold, he was an average kid with autism and fear of knives, but I'll save that extra detail when I traumatize you for a second time. Speaking of which, time to traumatize you properly for the first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to traumatize you now. I'm not sure if I'm getting this right, but if the girl's memories are actually accurate, there's no wonder why they got repressed. It hurts when someone close to you, someone like a girlfriend betrays you, but Candy was a clear example. But her own mother? That's sickening. How's my old lady voice doing, by the way? I should do like a, hey, I'm not sure if I'm getting this right, but the girl's memories are... <laughs> it's so dumb. For the last time, we had a visual downgrade back to pixel art, and finally in our own skin, Isabel finds herself in hell. I mean, school. Sorry, the two blur together sometimes, especially with this EBQ. I mean, Jesus' script is currently, at the time of writing, about 3,000 words, which is 3,000 words more than it takes to drive me insane. I'm like, this, I'm, I'm comparing this to my Not Safe to Link DC, which isn't published at the time of this video writing. But, like, that is this length, and that's 17 minutes all day, so <laughs> this is going to be a long video. Anyway, back in school, which seems to be slightly less Euclidean than usual, Isabel makes it home and at last finally gets some sleep. We find ourselves watching over Isabel now, unable to console her, and Isabel's mother comes in with a glowing spoon. Back in school, everything's on fire, looks like hell, and she eventually escapes to make it back to her house before she slips and a picture of a gaping pit appears on the screen. Insert pick joke here. Actually, I think I was actually meant to lie to joke in there, but I forgot. Oh well, no take backsies. Anyway, Isabel completes this fourth mini game and is a cutscene with Nana, basically saying goodbye as Nana telling Isabel to say hi to Max before. Because Nana is a filthy spoiler spider and already knows how the game ends. Anyway, she emerges at a ravine and crosses a bridge towards the clock tower. Pressing a buzzer as a heavy shutter opens, she makes her way inside. 
Isabel finds herself in a hallway where blood seems to be seeping out from the cracks between the bricks, and she approaches an elevator only to find that she doesn't have a key for it. Isabel, looking around, eventually finds a hand protruding from the wall, bearing a wooden doll made from sticks. Taking the doll, the arm slides grab her, but Isabel sort of just pulls away. Yeah, it's, it's just the hand in a wall. It's really easy to escape. Heading to the elevator, she uses the doll as the key and heads up to the top floor. And arriving there, she goes to a barricade door which begins to unbarricade itself for her as she enters the cutscene begins. What? As she enters the cutscene. She goes to a barricaded door. I'm sorry, I'm bad at reading. Now, this wouldn't be a story if we didn't have two endings and a small trigger warning. There's going to be some very violent stuff going down between these two kids or other teens. Point is, snowflakes or people who like being happy should move along. Maxwell's sitting on his bed talking about his plan to basically put an advanced Thanos and destroy everyone in normality before then using them to make a perfect society. Because human society lacks structure. He also says my favorite phrase in his EPQ. You can't do that! You're not God! You're right. I'm not God. Because God doesn't exist. That's a pretty sick quote, if I can say so myself. Anyway, there's a choice to be made leading up to two different endings. If Isabel leaves, she simply wakes up outside her house, packs her things, runs away from home. And if she doesn't, things get a bit violent. So, snowflakes and happy people, now is definitely a chance. So, if she refuses, Maxwell begins by stabbing her in the stomach with a pair of scissors he's been playing with throughout the cutscene, and flies away to go do some murdering. Isabel does the one thing you're not meant to do when you get stabbed, and pulls the scissors out of her stomach and walks down a hallway within the clock tower. She eventually finds a tape called Mother, and turns out Maxwell set up a tent and was just camping, I guess, because he flies in from above saying, That's mine! I like the way I gave him the coolest male villain voice, and then I went back to just two-year-old girl after you steal her toys from her. Anyway... He chases her around the clock tower before Isabel inserts the tape into a TV, which for some reason makes Maxwell kneel in front of it. I don't know, I guess Maxwell is already into binge-watching series on flesh television. Isabel stabs him in the back while he's kneeling, and he screams. This one peeps again for a tape called Martha and a talk called Martha. What is, what is me today? called father and a tape called good doctor which is not a recording of a series but something different does happen on this tape anyway basically he t he grabs the scissors while isabel attacks i don't know why he didn't write that in it's just an empty gap anyway he manages to climb on top of isabel with palaces in his hand but as he's about to stab her face he decides to go for the chest two things one, Isabel, how are you taking all of this? You've been stabbed in the chest by palaces once. This is the second time. You're still running around pretty well. Secondly, you should have gone for the head. He takes off his mask, revealing his face is now bleeding in large volumes, and is almost melting before he stands up, puts the mask on. Anyway, phase two begins, and it's already simple. It's just a bit of dodge, then stabby stabby, and eventually Isabel wakes up outside her house again, but bleeding. She goes into the house through her back window and looks for the first aid kit in the kitchen, but her mother comes back home, to which Isabel yeets herself out the window with no kit or luggage or bags as she runs away. Injured and without anything to stop the bleeding, she doesn't make it very far before she eventually sits on a log in the wood. Her vision blurs and she falls over. She doesn't get back up. God, that was depressing.